Welcome to My Watches with Ben, where I share choices I've made in my watch collecting hobby. Was this one a good or a bad choice? Keep watching and I'll tell all the details. Today's watch is the Hemel HFT20 Airfoil. It's a retro manual wind by Compax chronograph. Its design is based on a British 1970s military chronograph. I got this watch from Watch Gang almost two years ago for a 40% discount off the MSRP. It's a great travel watch and it's really, really useful for timing. The retro look is charming and they make this particular watch in three color variants, black, blue, and ivory, which is a full loom dial. And it comes in two sizes, 40 millimeter and 42 millimeter. Mine is the blue 42 millimeter version. Now I'll cover the specs and features, the positives and negatives, and give my final thoughts. Let's start off with the specs and features. Specifications. The dial diameter, as I mentioned earlier, is 42 millimeters. The lug width is a 22. The thickness is 13.4 millimeters, fairly thick. The lug to lug distance is 49 millimeters. The water resistance is 100 meters water resistance. The crystal is a double domed sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating. The movement is a Siegel ST19 with swan neck regulator. Look at that beautiful movement. Really quite amazing at the price. The price I paid is $285. And the case material is 316L stainless steel. The primary feature of the watch is the chronograph, which enables you to time to the quarter or fifth of a second, not totally sure, but to, to time in 30 minute increments. Um, you've got the central second hands, which counts the seconds, and then there's a sub-dial on the right that counts the, the, the 30 minutes. So once it goes all the way around, it'll be back at the beginning and do another 30 minutes. Secondary feature of the watch is the bezel, and it allows one to easily extend the time up to 12 hours. So what I like to do is when I start timing, I will align that diamond with the hour hand, and as time goes on, once the minute sub-dial makes a full rotation, the hour hand will be pointed at this dot. And when it goes around again, the hour will be, hand will be pointed at the one. And so um, I can count up to 12 hours of time with this bezel here. Um, something else you can do with this bezel is indicate a second time zone. So I'm in mountain time. If I want to know what time it is in, in Eastern time, that's two time zones later. So I put the two at the top, put the two at the top. It's two after me and then here in my time it is 537 but in their time it's 737 so you have a second time zone very easily left sub register just it'll always go if i stop stop the running second stop my chronograph and reset it um, that left sub register is just going to keep going it just indicates the watch is on and you can count it's got really nice hash marks there you can count very easily the seconds but those are independent second hands we call it a running seconds. And then this is a jump minutes hand. When it goes around, it will jump to the next one. Now with some features. The watch has syringe hands with beige or ivory. They call it ivory. Fotina loom. Uh, it's Fotina because it's faux meaning fake. And then patina is just what happens to materials as they degrade over time. So bronze will get all kinds of cool colors if you degrade it or accelerate the deg degradation. And... Uh, Patina, the old radium ones, they would turn darker over time because they're radioactive. But this this is called Fotina because they just colored it that way as if it had undergone some sort of patina process, which it has not. It's just straight from the factory, brand new. They just chose this color. Um, it has kind of a retro look to it, but people call it Fotina. Sorry if that was <laughs> incredibly pedantic to explain. But anyway, um, th there's white syringe hands with this uh, Fotina loom. There's a central second hand and jumping minutes subdial at three o'clock. Those have arrow tips to them, and they're they're both loomed. These subdial hands are loomed. All the hands are loomed. It's got a navy blue dial, which you see has some sort of like sparkling to it or something. It appears um, when there's no 
bright light shining on it, it appears smooth like enamel, but the moment you get some bright light shining on it, you see some grainy texture there. Um, so there's some sort of shiny flex in there or something going on. I'm not totally sure, but it's a very interesting dial. There's printing in white, beige, and a little touch of red at the 10 minute mark. I'm not gonna describe everything that's going on with the dial because there is a ton going on. Um, from what I can tell, these hash marks on the end are indicating fifths of a second. I don't even know if the movement actually does click five times a second, or the second hand. Um, the minute subdial at three o'clock has long hashes in three minute marks. That's very interesting, the way they've chosen this subdial over there. I actually really like it. Three, six, nine, and then the 10. And obviously you get everything in between in those railroad tracks, but it's cool to have those longer hash marks. It's just an interesting look to it. The 12 and six are bigger than the other numerals. That's sort of interesting that on the dial, the 12 and six have prominence there. I'm not sure why that is. Must be the original watch they were, um, this is based on. Maybe that had the same feature, but it is unique. The fonts on the dial match the fonts on the bezel, which is really nice. The, you see the si stylized seven there. The stylized seven on the dial matches the stylized. It's got that same font on the bezel. The loom is decent. It's nothing crazy. Um, it, it actually looks really good in these particular shots. The, the other shots I had were from an older camera. It looks good. Um, even the chronograph hands are loomed. You can't really tell the scale, so so the usefulness of the chronograph hands being loomed is a little bit limited. You can see that it's running at least, so that's kind of nice. Uh, there's no really chaptering on here or date. It's a no-date watch. The crystal, as I mentioned, was double dome sapphire with anti-reflective coating, and it works pretty well. I mean, you can you can see me reflecting my lights and the ceiling and everything. It's obviously not perfect. I don't think there's anything as perfect anti-reflective coating. It feels like there's some on the outside. It doesn't feel like totally um, naked sapphire. When I'm rubbing my fingernail along it, it feels doesn't feel totally smooth. So there might be AR on the outside. I'm not gonna try to scratch it to see. The bezel is fully loomed and it's ceramic. It's a 120 click bezel. You can see it's ceramic. It's so shiny and nice. It's 120 click bezel, which is really nice for for the timing, those extra clicks. If it's a 60 click, then you're not gonna be as precise, but you can get really precise with the, the bezel here. And you want to really be precise lining it up with that hour hand, so you can have a precise time reading when it goes around. The bezel has the numbers one through 11 with the diamond for the 12, and then it's really nice that there's dots in between them, because that tells you the 30 minute mark. So when 30 minutes have passed from now, whether a chronograph is on or off, just the bezel being this way, when 30 minutes have passed, the hour hand should be pointing right at this dot. And that's that's nice to tell the 30 minutes. The bezel action is very tight. This thing does not move unless you want it to. Um, it's not like it's not like I have to exert incredible force, but I'm just saying in comparison to other watches, the bezel really does not turn unless you want it to, which is great. That's how I want it to be. It does make it a little bit more difficult to turn. The the knurling on it, this coin edge knurling, is very shallow. It's not very grippy. The finger wants to just slide along, which again, um, it's serviceable. You can use it. You can turn, turn the bezel, but it's not really going to catch on something. When you have these huge chunky knurlings on, on bezels, the slightest little thing will, if you brush up your watch against something, boom, it's going to move that that bezel. So this is a lot better, in my opinion, to have more minimal knurling on the bezel. The case finishing is uh, just polished everywhere. You know, there's there's no surfaces on this that are brushed whatsoever. There's um, kind of a bead blasted thing going on with the crown, but that's it. Everything else is polished. Everything with this case is like rounded and streamlined. There's not really... Okay, there's... There's always a little sharp edge down here. I've seen that on every watch, but they, they've really tried to um, make it look kind of aerodynamic here. The lugs have a good downturn and taper a lot. So they taper inward. You can see it's almost teardrop shaped how they, they taper inward. 
I wanted to say that the 22 millimeter lug width actually does feel right to me on this watch. If they had gone down to 20, I think it would have looked a little bit small. The clasp is double signed, two for the price of, of one. You get Hemel on one side and Hemel on the other. You can see I've worn this a lot. It's gotten a lot of wear for me. The crown is signed with H and it's very thin. I have not, I don't have the measurement here, but is it like two millimeters or something? This is very, very thin crown. And the knurling is also very shallow on this, similar to the coin edge bezel. But in this case, when you're just trying to wind the watch, that's, that's not really a positive here. That's not something you want. You don't want it to be difficult to turn this. The display's case back states Hemel, Sapphire, Mechanical Airfoil, ST19, 10 ATM. There's a two-year limited warranty. And, you know, all credit to Hemel because when I bought, this isn't the one that I got from Watch Gang. I ordered one of these from Watch Gang and there was issues with the jumping minutes. It wasn't, it was totally messed up. The movement was just, the movement was whack. Three minutes had passed and it would say that nine had passed or something. It was totally messed up for some reason. Anyway, I contacted them and they said, yeah, just send the watch in. I told them I got it from Watch Gang and they did not care. That did not matter to them. Just the fact that I had their watch and it was faulty, they, they just replaced it with a new one. So all credit to them. I wore it for, for a few days before sending it back. So it wasn't in pristine condition or anything. There was probably a couple scratches here and there on the one I sent back, but they just honored that and they just sent me a new one, no questions asked. So that's pretty cool. The accuracy on this, um, I haven't, I haven't taken tons of days of measurements. One time I wore it five days in a row and I, I have those measurements. The average was eight plus eight seconds a day and the range was plus seven to plus 10. So it's pretty consistent for those, those five days. It was pretty much always the same gain, which is around eight seconds a day. The ST19 movement is based on the Venus, the Swiss Venus caliber 175 um, from the 1940s. In, in the 1960s, Siegel licensed this manual wind column wheel chronograph movement from Venus, and Siegel continues making it today. I think the Siegel has a couple more jewels than the, than the Venus did, but it's, a Swiss, it's essentially a Swiss movement that's manufactured by the Chinese. The box the watch came in is nothing to get excited about. It's it's fine. Wouldn't worry about it. It's a thank you card. Signed thank you card. And there's just a little pillow. And then it came wrapped in, in bubble wrap. And then there's a bunch of little cards and stuff in here. Nothing too earth shattering. There's also a microfiber cloth that you get with so many of these. I've not used it yet, but there it is. Oh, and here's the bottom, Hemel again, and this seal here, designed in New York. On to the positives. Positives! This watch has great finishing. It has pretty movement on the back. There's, I like the tight bezel action, bezel, I like the tight bezel action. That's much better than, than a loose bezel. So I hate when they migrate on their own. It's really a beautiful design. They did a great job on that. The, it has a great sapphire crystal that, it doesn't have that cloudy appearance of acrylic, but it does have that nice distortion when you turn it on the side here. And the AR coating does work very well. Um, Hemel has great customer service from what I can tell and in terms of functions, I just really love this 12 hour bezel. It's great for timing things, but it also works really well for showing a second time zone. Um, when I've been on travel, I've had a lot of fun timing the moment the airplane wheels left the ground to the moment they touched the ground and just knowing, oh, that's exactly one hour and 57 minutes and 10 and a fifth seconds or whatever. That It's totally useless information, like nobody cares about it, but it's satisfying to have an instrument that can that can do that, can return that value for me, and then I can have that um, 
it's just nice knowing that it has that capability. I, I like timing random things with this. I don't remember how long things took, but it's just fun to time things. The jumping minute makes it very easy to read the elapsed time. You know, here I, I, I can look at this and I know, okay, it's, um, it's a couple before the bottom. So I know that's 13 minutes and if I stop it, it's 13 minutes and 12 seconds. The way the subdial has three minute increments, that's actually pretty cool for the first for the first 10 minutes. It's it's kind of easier to to look at it that way because you go 369. It was a good price at approximately 300 bucks. The the leather strap on this is really excellent. I think it was a little bit lighter when I got it. I've worn this quite a lot, so the leather has darkened as I've gone about my life and it's been dirty. You know, I've been in the dirty world wearing this watch, so it's darkened a little bit. But it's, it looks really good, and the brown brown always goes well with blue, in my opinion. I think that's a good combination. I think blue blue watches with brown leather is a good look. Now on to the negatives. <laughs> first negative is this tiny little crown it the winding on this watch is really unpleasant um, the knurling is too shallow so it's hard you have to pinch pretty hard to actually get a good grip on this um, I know that winding can be enjoyable one watch in particular that I have the Vostok retro just is such a joy to wind that thing um, so I know this can be an enjoyable experience but this one really isn't it's a little bit stiff. The resistance is kind of stiff compared to the Vostok Retro, which is a much simpler movement, obviously. But that one turns very easily and is very satisfying and has a nice big crown to grab onto um, comparatively. This one is so dinky, and there is a lot of resistance here, so it is not fun to wind this thing, which, which is really a shame because with a manual winding watch, you literally have to wind it every time you wear it. If winding a manual wind watch is not enjoyable, then I'm just not going to want to wear that watch very much. So the crown needs to be bigger. It wouldn't have to be much bigger. I mean, they could double it, I think. I think that would be fine. Another negative is that the ST19 movement can be hit or miss. Um, for example, <laughs> the first one I got had some, some major issues that it just would not time things accurately. So, also, I don't know about service with this kind of movement. You know, if, if it starts acting up again in the future, is it going to be cheaper to service it or cheaper to just spend $80 and get a new movement? So that's, some, that's a limitation, but I think it's cool to have the, the watch. The positive of having such a cool movement outweighs the possible negative of trying to service it. Final negative I have for this one is that I've been told that this broad arrow symbol is is only supposed to be used by the British government. However, I've heard about in history that <laughs> in part due to King George's practice of claiming American trees by marking them with that symbol, the, the colonists, the American colonists fought back. And so much so that in some battles, colonists flew flags with a pine tree on it because the king was marking pine trees with this broad arrow symbol claiming them for himself and the colonists were like no no it's a, these are our trees the criticism anyway the criticism is that hemel's not a british brand it's designed in new york and who knows where it's assembled but it is not british and so it should not have the broad arrow on it this is in fact an american designed reinterpretation of a 1970s british pilot's chronograph and so that's why the broad, broadhead's on there is because it was a british pilot's chronograph and now for the closing <laughs> In conclusion, was this watch a good choice or a bad choice for my collection? It was a great choice, in my opinion. I'm so glad to have an ST19 in the collection. I, I think you kind of have to have one. It's just, it's such a cool movement at such an affordable price. The retro styling appeals to me a lot. I like having the 12 hours on the bezel. It makes timing really easy. You almost don't even need a chronograph to, to time with that. It's just super useful. I prefer having the bezel to having like a third sub register that had hours or something because you can also use the bezel for a second time zone. 
And with how thin they made the bezel, it just looks really elegant. It's not, it doesn't look like a dive watch or something. It looks really good. Sometimes I think the faux Tina is a bit much. It is very strong. It's very dark color. Um, however, I used PowerPoint to see what it would look like with more subtle faux, faux Tina. You know, just to have, remove background, just kept the, the loom here and then use brightness to make it white. And now that I see the result, I think it, the color scheme looks a lot better with the full ivory. Obviously there's some other artifacts going on here or whatever, but so it, it's not a perfect mock-up or anything, but you can kind of get the, the feel of it and the colors. I just think that ivory looks really good with the blue. So whether or not Fotina is a gimmick, I think a lot of times it is, and maybe even in this situation it is. Um, either way, the color combination here is really cool. I think that's why it's so popular. It just, it looks good. It's, it's a much more interesting color combination than it would be if the indexes were white. It makes it look a lot better. The black dial version of this watch is a lot more cohesive than the blue, but I'm glad I have the blue. I chose the blue because that's the only one they had in Watch Gang for 40% off. They didn't have the black one. I, the black is probably more popular, but, um, I'm glad I chose the blue because I think it has a little bit more character than the black. It's such a dark blue that it appears black sometimes anyway. It's not like... I mean, it's it's a nice blue. It's a true navy blue. And I think it has more character with, with these two colors. I've mentioned before in the past that I like micro brands, and this one's no exception to the general reasons why I like micro brands. You get something unique, and you get a lot for your money. And that's it. That's the end of the review for the watch. You can see there's still time remaining on the video. I will now discuss a Bible passage. Please keep watching to enjoy that. <laughs> Bonus time. I'm not a pastor or a biblical scholar. I just like to share um, what a particular Bible passage means to me and talk about it, how it's blessed me. I just like studying the Bible and sharing that with other people. Um, today's passage is Isaiah chapter 54, verses 2 and 3. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perversity. Isaiah is speaking to the nation of Israel, but this passage also applies to individuals. Um, I personally, for example, through my iniquities, my sins, have separated myself from God. I can feel this when it happens. I can feel that separation taking place. So there's some other passages about separation. One is Genesis 1, verse 3 and 4, right at the beginning of the Bible. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. Separate. That's the same, it's the same Hebrew word here, to separate the light from the darkness. It's the same word Isaiah was using to say that our iniquities have separated us from God. So in Genesis 1, it's not just about visible light and the absence of visible light. That's not just what's being separated. It's, it goes deeper. The point is that there is objective truth. There's a substance or attribute or phenomenon called light, and it is separate from darkness. In fact, it is the opposite of darkness. I mean, is there any place on Earth or in the universe that truly has no light, that is completely dark? Maybe, maybe there is, but... The fact that there is a variation in dark and light means that there is absolute perfect light and there is the absence of that light, which is darkness. And, and theoretically, there is a, an absolute perfect darkness that exists as well. But the light cannot exist with darkness in it. Pure light has no darkness in it. They're separate, they're separate things. They don't, it's not like light is, is just less dark or something. Light is completely different from dark. Hopefully that makes sense. God is absolute pure goodness, and that is separate from evil of any sort. Good is diametrically opposed to all evil. They, they, they do not overlap. You've got good, and good does not overlap with evil. So Isaiah is pointing out that through sin, committing evil, we separate ourselves from God. 
God actually doesn't want this separation. He wants to be together with us for eternity. He made us in his image. Remember that God's goodness is absolute. He doesn't want it to be this. He doesn't want the separation to exist, but the separation has to exist. He cannot compromise his core attribute of goodness. Personally, I don't think goodness has any meaning without evil. That's another thing here. Also, love has no meaning unless it's embraced freely. If one is compelled to do something, that is not love. So if God were to force us to comply with his laws, that would not be loving. We would not be choosing to, to be with him. So pure love and pure goodness is what God brings to the table through Jesus Christ, his son. Through Jesus, we have a way to be washed clean of our iniquities that separate us. We can be reunited. We can be restored. We are restored. If we believe in Jesus, we are totally restored to that position of a child of God because of the, the price that Jesus paid for us to willingly choose to be with God forever in spite of our past iniquities. The Bible says that in the day of redemption, we will be made new. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. God will be with us. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. The death, sorrow, crying, these are, these are darkness. So there will be a day when darkness is cast out. So that means the sin will go away too. God has a way for us to not sin anymore. But that's in the day of redemption. That has not happened yet. We are continuing to sin, but our fate is secured. Our hope, we have hope in Jesus Christ. And John fifteen thirteen, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Jesus is our friend, and he laid it down his life for us so we could live with him forever. There's a saying, if God feels far away, it's me who moved, not him. So what can separate us? In Romans 8, Paul asks a question about separation and then answers it in verse 39. So in Romans 8, 35, he says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? And he answers that a few verses later, uh, 38, 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is what I was talking about. When Jesus laid down his life for us. Greater love has no one than this. That secured us for all time. Everyone who believes on Jesus that secured us us a solution, freedom from our sin. We have that eternal salvation ready for us. But that's in the day of redemption. Right now here on earth, we can still sin. And our sin still separates us from God. And doing good things brings us closer to God, provided they are done with the right motivation. Thy will, not mine, be done. That motivation. That love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, is always there. If I feel it is not there, then my own iniquity is the culprit. Nothing on this earth can separate me from God. Nothing outside myself can separate me from God. However, I can separate myself from God by sinning. I can access God's love at any time. Circumstances, tribulation, distress, being naked or hungry, none of that can separate me from the love of God. I can access that love at any time. His will is for me to repent of that sin and walk in his ways and accept his son Jesus as propitiation for my sin. By doing so, I will not be separated from him. I will live him, with him forever in a new dwelling, a house not built with hands, eternal in the heavens. In the book of Matthew, it is described how God will separate people into two categories. This is Greek now, it's not Hebrew, so it's not the exact same word, but God will separate just as he separated light from dark in Genesis, Jesus says in the final days, he will separate the sheep from the goats. Uh, this is from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 34. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. This is the day of redemption. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand with the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. 
course, the, the goats go to, to suffer eternally. As I mentioned previously, the light cannot have any darkness within it. We, we can't have this pure heaven if you're having people rejecting Jesus. That's not going to work. We, we have to accept him in order to, to live forever with him. The benefit of togetherness with God. Here's another passage, Psalm 1, chapter 1 through 4. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. The wicked are driven away from the Lord, from that source of water. So in here, the, the tree is planted by streams of water, water being the source of, of life from God, um, that connection to God. The tree has the roots to the water connecting with, with life everlasting. Uh, my point here is that while we're here living on earth, before the day of redemption, before we die, while we're alive here on earth, we can still sin. Um, that's what it says at the beginning of the psalm is, um, blessed is the man who walks. So you're still alive if you're walking. Who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. So if I'm walking in the law of the Lord, if I'm walking in Jesus' commandments to love others as I love myself, to love God above all, to, to, to love God and serve him, but not serve other interests. As long as I'm doing that, I'm going to be close to God. But the moment I am sinning, and uh, what does it say here? If I'm wicked, or if I'm walking in the counsel of the wicked, if I stand in the way of sinners, sit in the seat of scoffers, if I do that, I'm going to be like the chaff that the wind drives away. I'm going to be separated from that source of goodness and life. And that's what I want. I want to be a tree planted by streams of water. So how this has blessed me, it's, it's very practical. Um, it's, it's very simple. And it's like, it's something I think gets confused about the message of Christianity sometimes is that we do have the salvation. All you have to do is believe. Okay, well, it's done. Some people think, oh, yeah, that's it. I, I did it. You know, I believe in Jesus. I'm going to heaven. Boom. Now I just do whatever I want on this earth. And hey, I know I'm going to heaven. So, so whatever. But there's a price to be paid there's a price to be paid, and we're not doing God's will when we have that attitude. Um, we may not be saved if we have that attitude. That may be an indication that we really have not accepted Jesus. So um, it's very practical for me to, throughout my day, if I feel that separation from God, I just feel like, where is he? Where, where's God in my life right now? Well, I need to look, have I been sinning? Which, of course, the answer is yes. Of course I've been sinning. Am I aware of what the sins are? Am I repenting of them and asking God to, to help me walk in his ways? Am I turning to the Bible? Am I turning to God to solve my problems? Or am I trying to do it all by myself? I'm trying to pretend the problems aren't there? I'm trying to sweep things under the rug that I should be confessing and repenting of? So it's very practical when this is applied. I know that my sin carries with it an actual tangible penalty and I can feel that separation when it happens. I also know that the separation is caused by me. And at any moment, I can turn to the Lord and repent, and he'll be there for me. The only condition is that I turn to him. Secondly, I know that when I return to him, I have access to that living water. and My leaf will not wither. My spiritual leaf. I'm going to be at peace. I'm going to have that joy that the Bible talks about. That assurance and hope. I'm not going to be in the depths of despair. If I'm with walking with God, I have that security. And I, I have that, that joy that I was talking about. So those are a couple blessings. If you want better biblical analysis, I've listed four excellent pastors in the description. Um, check them out. They're all really excellent. Lord, thank you for this venue to talk about your word. It's blessed me greatly. And I know you tell, tell us that whenever two or more of us are gathered, you are there with us. And so if anyone's watching this, then I know you're there with us. And I thank you for that. Please bless anyone who watches this in Jesus name. Amen. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and in every way. 
the Lord be with you all. See you next time. And I know that he'll be with